questions or uh, anything like that. I don't know how if, if anyone's interested in sort of you know what how the whole thing is working. I'm happy to talk about it. Is that of interest or uh, yes? yes. <laughs> uh, okay. um, so I started working on this instrument in the early '80s um, when I was uh, studying trumpet and I got interested in a lot of avant-garde experimental music which uh, used a lot of different mutes and different sounds. The whole idea was to try to get a lot of different tone colors, timbres we call it, out of the, the, the trumpet as all you know, modern instruments. So I came up with this idea with to have multiple bells so that I'd be able to switch between these timbres easily. And um, I also had been the idea to make it an electronic instrument too. And, uh, I start, I was able to, fortunate enough to work with Robert Moog on designing my first uh, processing system for it. And, and I, think, I think like a lot of things, um, this it started off as almost like a goof, like a joke or something. and Or, or just, oh, well, this is a fun thing, let's mess around with this or something. But then it kind of became more serious and as I got interested in composing, I really was uh, developing it as a vehicle for my own compositions. You know, a lot of people would ask me, well, do you want to sell it or market it or anything like that? And I, I never have really had any interest in that. And for me, it's, it's purely a vehicle for my own musical expression. That, that's really the, you know, the, the, the motivation behind developing it. Um, I have done some performance of other people's pieces on it, but not so much lately. I mean, not, I mean in the last 15 years, I've really been purely focused on my, my own music. But I started being an artist in residence at an electronic music studio over in uh, Amsterdam, and that was when it really became a fully digital thing. And so, but what's, what I'm doing is basically there's a well, there's a pickup in the mouthpiece here, uh, and like like many in things of this nature, this instrument is a is a real mix of old and new. Like this, this is a, a, a pickup that's you know from the 70s. It's like what Miles used to use when he was doing uh, all of his Wawa stuff. Like this thing isn't made anymore. Okay, uh, and the device that that plugs into, so the trumpet then plugs into the, this device over here, uh, which is called a pitch to MIDI device. So it turns my acoustic notes and dynamics into uh, a language of ones and zeros that the computer can understand. So that's how I'm able to play uh, synthesizers, you know, directly. So you would usually do that by, you know, pressing a key, but it is actually able to respond to my uh, notes and dynamics. And then a lot of what I'm doing is I'm sampling my acoustic sound uh, on the fly as I'm playing. So, with the exceptions of, with the exception of the beats and bass lines, which are external sounds, all the textures that happen on the top, all the chordal things and all, are actually being the sound is being grabbed from what I'm doing in real time. So, therefore, uh, it's a little bit different each time. It is it is composed in the sense that there are chords that are programmed, but Depending on what I play into those chords, it's kind of a, a mixture of not pure chance, but also not pure uh, predictability either. Um, and then all these different controllers on here, these joysticks and uh, knobs and switches are also what we call MIDI, it's the musical instrument digital interface. So this computer over here is basically all it's doing is just controlling what I'm sending to the trumpet. So I have 16 different controllers on here that I can use to modify those samples that I make on the fly, bring things up and down, and you notice that I kind of switch when I go from one section to the next. There's a switch here. There's other switches that let me kind of move around if I want. So it's it's uh, kind of optimized for uh, flexibility, and uh, you know this is the most recent one that I made in. Uh, at Stein in Amsterdam in 2008, and uh, you know, just keep on kind of finding new things to uh, connect it with. I also perform the video a lot, so that my notes and dynamics are also manipulating video. It was a little too bright in here today to get the effect of that, uh, but uh, that's the that's the general uh, kind of concept of uh, what I'm doing. So. Any other questions or anything?
what's next? Is this done? What, what are you going to add to it now? Well, actually, I do have a new thing that I'm... One of the things that I, I didn't really use the slide much today. Like, there, there's a slide, you know, you know... So it gives me a capability to do uh, a treat with Sondo. But one of the things that I'm, uh, I'm prototyping, or beta testing, I guess you'd say, a, uh, a new wireless sensor system, one of the things that I've always wanted to do is to be able to use this as a controller. Because one of the things about it that is challenging in doing this kind of stuff is like, what the hell is he doing up there? You know, there's this little thing here that I'm messing with that's, you know, making a sound. But, you know, this kind of a gesture is something that, you know, you can see better. You know, it's more, more dramatic. But uh, I have never figured out a way to actually use that. And so there's a wireless, uh, new wireless sensor device now that I'm looking at that is actually an ultrasound thing so that like if, if it, it has a receiver that would sit there and there's a little piece that would go here and so that I would actually be able to do things, you know, control things by doing that. And, uh, and th this, uh, this music that you heard today, a lot of it is uh, also being, uh, is part of a new kind of opera music theater piece that I'm uh, doing. It's going to be premiering uh, next year. Um, it's a kind of biographical opera of Douglas Engelbart, who's the guy who invented the mouse and, and really invented personal computing uh, back in the 1960s. And uh, he did this incredible demonstration in 1968, which literally showed everything that we use in modern computing, the mouse, multi-site uh, networking with video and everything. And so we're doing a kind of, I'm working with uh, another composer, Michael Rouse, and a whole team of theater people. And we're doing a kind of opera theater piece that was built around the video of that particular demonstration. So the trumpet kind of fits into that in a more almost narrative sort of context. So. Where would that be here? Uh, University of Illinois, uh, the Craner Center for Performing Arts is going to be done there in February. And we, we haven't uh, come up with a, a venue around here yet. We have a, a lot of interest out on the West Coast. Stanford's going to be doing a uh, big uh, presentation of it out there, which is great because that's where Inglemark was based and Silicon Valley, the whole... Uh, but uh, we're hoping to do it uh, around here somewhere. Actually, Montclair State did express some interest, so we'll see you know, do it there. I'm sure we'll do it somewhere in New York, but it, this is something that's really probably not going to, these pieces, because they take so long to develop and raise money for and everything, it's not going to really come to full fruition, I think, for at least another year. So, okay. all right.